Hi and welcome to High on Coding. I'm your host Mamat Azam, and in this screencast, I will introduce you to Rake. R A K E. Rake is basically a build framework for Ruby language, or the Ruby framework, and um, we can use it actually in our .NET application to build our application, to compile our application, to run the unit tests, and do all sort of really cool things. The really good thing about Rake is that it is Ruby. So you don't have to uh, use NAND XML file or M as a build XML files, all that crap that we used to do. Now you can simply use Rake to build your application, to run unit tests and to perform all the deployment tasks. So let's introduce this. So I already have a Rake file, which is called rakefile.rb. Before that, I would suggest that you download the Ruby framework if you haven't done so, and then install the rake, which is simply as gem install uh, rake. So it's a gem, it will be downloaded on your machine, and it's that simple, okay? So let's uh, start with creating a task because it's all about task and risk, rake, and what task you want to execute. So I'm just gonna say this task is known as compile, okay? And I'm gonna say, okay, uh, Puts, which I'm going to do some message and I'll say compiling the application okay so now if I want to execute this task what I want to do or I have to do is simply say rake and then the name of the task which is compile and then it shows that the, this task actually ran it's saying compiling the application now uh, I'm using my file name is rake file which is the default file will it with uh, the build framework rake will look at and that's why it's actually running without using the file name okay so let's go ahead and another task create another task uh, i'm just going to say it uh, run a unit uh, test and and i'm going to say okay here puts running unit test Okay, and if I want to run that task, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to say the task name, rake, and, and then run underscore uh, unit test. And now you can see that now this particular task is executed and it displays running unit test. But most probably you will want to compile your application first or build your application first before running the unit test, right? So we can easily create a dependency by saying uh, that first thing that we need to do is to run the compile task and only then it can execute the run unit test. Okay, so let's go again and run the unit test again. And now you can actually see that now it's saying compiling the application because it has a dependency. So it goes over here, compiles, and then run the unit test task and then it's running the unit test another good idea is always to give some sort of a description compiling the application description will come in handy when there are a lot of tasks and you want to see what each task actually does okay so running unit test so if i want to see the description in action i'm just going to say rig slash slash I mean the dash dash and then task and now you're going to see that okay uh, these are my tasks and on the right hand side is a description of the task okay compiling the application running unit test blah 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 one cool thing that I need to show you is that you can execute shell commands from within your task and this will be our ticket to enter into uh, building our application compiling our applications, running unit tests, running executables using rig. So I'm just going to execute a notepad over here. Okay, and let's go ahead and run the unit test and you'll see the notepad actually pop out. So we can execute the exe files from uh, the Ruby code, okay, because it's running in a shell environment. So that's pretty much it. In the next video, the next screencast, I will actually show you how 
you can compile your application, how Rig will compile the application. It will run all the unit tests in the eStudy application and it will be much easier rather to go and edit and just diving into that uh, XML crap, right? One last thing, Ion Coding is always looking for donations. If you think these videos have helped you and I try to produce every video in HD, these videos takes about 30 to 60 minutes to record and then a lot of time to actually convert from this video format to HD. So if you want to open your heart for donation, I would really appreciate. There are different links that you can see that you can do a one-time donation or you can do a monthly recurring donation and the donation amount is like crazy low. You can actually see it's like $2 a monthly, maybe $5 a monthly, or you can do a one-time donation. All your donations are, will, can be used to uh, you know, produce much better videos, to get more uh, better sound equipment, or to get faster computers so that uh, we can convert these videos much more faster. Okay, I hope you liked this video. Thank you very much and see you next time.